everybody. My name's Ashley. I've been doing a channel called Think or Rethink about lining your thinking pattern up with God's word, the truth, and being set free from the wrong mindsets, um, just because of the wrong upbringing, uh, being you were persuaded by the world, how the world portrays everything to be, and you have to align your thinking pattern up with God's word, the truth, to be set free from that, from the wrong mindset, and to be filled with truth. Uh, so I've been doing a series on godly spouses. So I really uh, digged a, pretty deep into godly spouses and I really want to finish the godly spouses series off with the heart condition because it's very important for our hearts to be aligned with God's will and his plans for us and not to be deceived with other people's plans for us or our own hearts to be deceived with what we want and convince it convince ourselves that it's God it's from it's what God wants for us and it's not we don't want to do that right we don't want to deceive ourselves and cut ourselves short so it's very important for us to know the difference and I had this illustration hit my heart like the Holy Spirit was speaking to me and it's just amazing like this illustration and I hope you guys can follow along this is going to be really really long probably a little longer than the average video I do because it's really, really deep. So we're going to start with the illustration, okay? And then I'm going to dig a little deeper into that. And I have the Word of God scripture to back it up. All right, so God looks at the heart, right? God, God judges our intentions of our heart. So think of it as a house that you, were, you have never been inside of this house. And... Um, when you become a born again believer in Christ, you are no longer on the outside of the house. Okay. Christ brings you inside the house because the spirit, your spirit is no longer dead. He brings you to life. So he brings you to the inside of the house. Okay. This is your heart. Your, your, your heart is like a house. And before Christ, you were out on the outside of the house. But when you receive Christ and you become a born again believer and you put your your faith in uh believing in jesus then you go on the inside of your house okay coming on the inside of your house is christ calling you to the narrow path and drawing you away from the broad path that you used to live in right because he's 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 inside your heart Shh. guys sorry uh, on the inside of the house, the old has passed away and the new life has begun. So inside the house, there are many rooms with a long hallway. The rooms represent all the different areas of your life, of a person's heart, uh, their desires. The uh, areas include but not are not limited to. So they can include more than this. This is just different categories uh, that we're faced with more uh daily than others so it could be finances and money it could be career and goals it could be hobbies and interests it could be beliefs and opinions and there are so many rooms of a person's heart right so you got a long hallway you're inside the house you got a long hallway and then each room has like your beliefs your desires your goals your relationships uh, romance, romantic relationships, stuff like that. A person's free will determines how long those doors to the room stay shut from letting God open them. So because of your free will, because of your own desires and your own wants and needs, that determines on how long that door stays shut and not open to God. The ultimate will of God is to conform us to his son, Jesus Christ. We aim for more of Jesus and less of us, and he may live through us. And each time you surrender an area of your heart to God, which is a room, um, to your house, which is your heart, to God, then you go into the hallway to the next room. And it depends on how long you're stuck in the hallway because of your own pride uh, arrogance, uh, unwillingness, uh, frustration, detours, setbacks that you're going through. This depends how long you're stuck in the hallway before you're in that next room. Okay? Are you guys still with me? I hope so. 
it's really good. It's a good illustration. So the goal to the house, okay? The goal is to have all the doors open in your heart, all the doors open in the house, which is your heart, to God, to God's will, to be surrendered in all areas of your heart, to align with his perfect will for you, the purpose over all that he has created you for and what he has planned for you, not yourself. This is the best life and this is the best version of you. Isn't that wonderful? So each time that you surrender an area in your in your house to God, then God opens that door and he can go to the next area of your life and he can help you work through that area to open uh, that up to his plans too. And eventually your goal is to have all the doors open in the house so your heart is open to God. So you're surrendering all those areas to the Lord. Isn't that amazing? Are you guys ready to go deeper? All right. So we're going to go back a little bit, okay? So God looks at the heart, right? So think of your house as, think of the house as your heart. All right. So we are going to read 1 Samuel 16, 7, NIV says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things the people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. It's all about your heart, guys. God's looking at your heart. All right. Number two, when I told you that um, when Christ brings you inside the house because you've never been inside the house, you have to become a born again believer for Christ to bring you on the inside of the house for him to work inside your heart. OK, because your spirit is dead without Christ, what? you'll perish. What? But with Christ, your spirit is alive and you'll have eternal life. So Romans 8, Romans 8, 10 to 11 NIV says, but if Christ is in you, then Evie, then Evie, though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. His spirit is what brings you to life. It, so you're able to go into the house. So he's able to go into your heart and start working in it. Isn't that amazing? All right, so... The next one, when you're coming inside the house, Christ is calling you to the narrow path. So you, you come inside when Christ comes into your heart, he's taking you away from the broad path because when you're on the outside of the house, there's all this openness, all this chaos and toxicity and all this confusion and all this stuff that is, goes against the character of God. So you're, you're, you're broadly open to everything, but then when he brings you on the inside of the house and he comes on the inside of your heart, your heart start, it's a more narrow area for him to start working in your, in your heart. So the narrow and wide gates, Matthew 7, 13 to 14 NIV says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Also, Christ is the gate. He, he's the gatekeeper. He's the shepherd. All right? So he's the door. So John 10, 9 says, NIV, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pastor. This is red letters. That means from the Bible, the red letters is Jesus speaking. It's what he said while he is on earth. All right, so... So once you go on the inside, once Christ starts working in your heart, on the inside of the house, the old has passed away and the new life has begun. 
we are going to 2 Corinthians 5 17 therefore if anyone is in Christ the new creation has come the old has gone the new is here so the new begins how amazing all right so inside the house there are many rooms and a long hallway the rooms represent all the different areas of your life your desires your wants your goals your dreams finances money career relationships romance marriage whatever that may be for you guys in your heart you you want s certain things for all that stuff you have your own plans your own desires all right so um many are the plans in a person's heart i'm sorry my kids are in the background you guys please i'm making a video proverbs uh 1921 niv many are the plans in a person's heart but is it the lord's purpose that prevails isaiah 53 6 niv we all like sheep have gone astray each of us has turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the inequity of all of us, the sin, the wickedness. He took all that because we, we, we just were sinners, right? Without Christ, we're, we're lost and we go to death. We don't have any hope, any future. We're not saved without Christ. God took, God uh, sent Jesus and Jesus took all of that upon himself. So that we can be forgiven and stuff through Christ to God. We can be reconciled because of Jesus. He's the mediator between God and man. Mankind. Isn't that awesome? And our own desires and our own wants and stuff makes us go off astray. Because that's just our nature. Like we just, we have our own things. Like the last Bible verse says, many other plans in a person's heart but it's the lord's purpose that prevails meaning we have many plans of our own and stuff but it may not be it's not god it's not god's plans for us his plans are different proverbs 21 2 says a person may think their own ways are right but the lord weighs the heart so we think our ways is right but our ways leads to destruction and chaos and toxicity and setbacks and just uh, unpurposeful purpose, purposeful life and a dead end it gets us nowhere because we're only human isaiah 55 8 9 says for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways declares the lord meaning his thoughts are higher for us his ways are higher for us there's no the way that we can understand his ways or his thoughts they're different than ours. He's good. He has the best plans for us. Plans that we can't even have for ourselves because he knows all. From the beginning to the end. He's the author of our of our the author and finisher of our faith. Like he knows everything. Alright, so we went inside the house. Now we're seeing that our desires does not line up with God's desires, right? So all those rooms in the house, which is the rooms of our heart, are not going to line up right away with God's. Like we have to come to our own undoing because we have to understand, like we have to um, get to our own end with those wants and desires that we have. That way we can, we can surrender it to God and, uh, and align our wills and our plans, our will and our plan up with God's. Because he has the best plans for us. Our own plans are just chaotic and chaos, confusion, just dead ends. Like, they don't get us anywhere. So we have to come to our own undoing so God can open those doors to our heart when we surrender. He can open them to his will, his way that he has for us. Alright, a person's free will determines how long those doors stay shut. Oh, we do have free will, guys. So God gives us the gift of free will because who wants to be made to love someone? God chooses us. God doesn't need us. He's self-sufficient. But God chooses us. But he wants us to choose him too. 
He wants us to have, he wants, he gives us the gift for free will to choose him. He doesn't want to make us choose him. That wouldn't be love. That wouldn't be right. That would be fake. So, uh, number six, Genesis. We have free will. Genesis 2, 16 through 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will surely die. God said, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. And he, and he warned Adam not to eat. He warned them not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He warned them, but he gave them free will to decide to do it or not. Because we all know how that turned out. They decided to do it. Even though they were deceived to do it. But we still know how that turned out. Alright, free will. Uh, do you, you Romani 30, 19 through 20 NIV says, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curse. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. Choose life. Free will. You have the choice. You get to make that decision. So what are you going to choose? So the ultimate will of God is to conform us to his son, Jesus Christ, right? He does that by changing our hearts, by using everything in our lives to conform us to Jesus for the ultimate will of his. So uh, seven, I have a Bible scripture and I've said it in several other videos. Romans 8:29 NIV For those God foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to his, the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters Amen So we aim for more Jesus and less of us and he may live through us right That's what our aim is as Christians as Christ followers um as we surrender those areas of our life then we align our will up with God's will and then we start to walk in what he's called us to do and freedom from anything that would bound us in this in this world that's not of God we start to live how he's called us to live we start to do the things that he's called us to do the good works that he has already preordained for us to do before the um forming us you know he's already planned it he has it all planned out so let's see so eight so we aim to be more like jesus right john three thirty. he must become greater and i must become less galatians two twenty. I have been crucified with Christ and I am no longer alive, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Do not, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you, who you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. God, the, when we are a born again believer, we have the Holy Spirit that we're uh, indwelled with. And that's the Spirit of God. So it's saying that He has to become greater. Um, and we have to become less. The flesh side of us, the um, mankind, the sinful side of us becomes less. And God becomes greater. He works through us and uses us. And um, just it's just amazing, guys. He gets his ultimate purpose. Like, he gets all the purposes that he created all of us as individuals to orchestrate for the sovereign will of his. Like, an overall plan of all of it. All of it works together for that. Isn't that so amazing? Wow. I do I dive pretty deep in this. It took me about a week to do this. I've been studying. So each time you surrender an area of your heart. Uh, let's 
some scriptures down for that too. Sorry, forgive me. I keep having to go back and forth. So this one is God is working in your heart, right? Each time you surrender an area of your heart, a room in your heart, you open to God when you surrendered. Philippians 1, 6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. He who began a good work in you will carry it on. He is working in your heart, so he's going to keep on until the day Jesus Christ comes back. Or the day you die and you're with Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Psalms 51.10 Create in me a pure heart, O Lord, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Create in me a pure heart. He helps. He helps clean our hearts. Because our hearts is not godly. They're the opposite. He cleans them. He opens those rooms. As you surrender, he opens the room in your house. And then you go to the next area and the next area. Some will take longer than others, but it's okay. He who starts a good work in you will carry it out. Okay, so this is awesome. I wrote quite a bit of scriptures down for this. This isn't too long of a video. I tried to kind of say it a little fast. I'm sorry. I've been trying to read it because I, I don't want you guys to lose my train of thought because it's just it's just really deep and it's 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 hard for me to describe it and just articulate it um so the goal is to have all the doors open in your heart in your house to god but and by god so each time you surrender all areas that's what happens right and this is the best life and the best you you can live is when you surrender those areas to live the best life and to be the best version of you all right i wrote down a, a few scriptures so job uh, 11 13 through 15 yet if you do if you devote your heart to him and stretch out your hand to him if you put away the sin that is in your hand and allow no evil to dwell in your tent then free of fault you will lift you will lift your face you will stand firm and without fear if you devote your heart surrender your heart to him so surrender your heart. Proverbs uh, 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on, on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Paths. It doesn't say path. It says paths. Meaning there's different areas of life for you to take different paths. Like different rooms in your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. So it's saying trust. Use your heart to trust him. Trust him in every area of life. Because those things are in your heart. Your goals, your dreams. Just, just everything that you have. Like your desires, your wants. Things like that is in your heart. So trust God with them. James 4 a NIV says, Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Come near to God and he will come near to you. You get closer to God, he'll get close with you. And purify your hearts. How do you do that? By allowing God to work in your heart. Getting closer to God. Seeking God. Seeking his will. Reading his word. It's the truth. It will set you free from all the wrong the wrong mindsets. The strongholds. The things that have set you back. The things that have taken you down the wrong paths. Like everything will become more clear the more you spend time with God. And the more you read his word. You renew your mind. Your thinking. And then you start to see things from his perspective, how things should be. And you won't see things in a worldly perspective anymore. And your whole life will change. It's amazing. Oh, it's just amazing. So Matthew 16, 24 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciples must deny themselves 
and take up their cross and follow me. Deny yourselves. That means that you must put your plans, your desires, your wants, your way of thinking off to to not do and you must allow God to do it his way and be open and surrendered to his will and just don't take it in your own hands and try to do it yourself and if you don't get those things you you got to get to the point where you're okay with not having them because that's not part of your story that God has for you then if you want what God wants, then you have to be open to all the things that he has for you, all the great things that he has for you. And that might be you not getting a spouse or you not having children or you not getting your plans fulfilled in a way that you thought. It, it's okay, though, because he'll answer it the way that you need it answered, the way that he has planned for you, the, the best way for you. And you'll become the best version of yourself. And he's not, because he's not going to give you anything that's going to harm you and take you away from him, right? He's going to give you the puzzle pieces that fit into the story, the overall picture that he has for you as a unique person, as a son and daughter of him. He's going to give you that stuff. He's not going to give you stuff that will take you away from him, that will harm you, that will just confuse you, that goes against his character, that are ungodly, that are things that are going to set you back and stuff like if you want the things that he has for you and stuff like that then please believe that he has the best plans for you and he's going to give you the best he's not going to give you anything less but you have to trust in his timing you have to lean not on your own understanding as we just read you have to um trust and know that he'll make your path straight that you have to seek him and his will above all and you have to be willing to deny yourself from getting the things that you thought you were entitled to get or that was part of your life that you, that you wanted so bad. You have to be okay with not getting those things. But he'll fill you up so much with what he does have for you and stuff like that. Eventually, you won't even care about those little desires that you have because you'll be so filled in the life that you're living that he has for you because it's the best, better than you can have ever imagine plans that he has for you so i just wanted to give this illustration to you guys it was on my heart oh it was on my heart like um last weekend i would say and i just started writing and writing and i started getting deeper into it and i really wanted to fill in the illustration with more of um just the scripture the the word because that's what we need we need god's word to renew our mind and to clean us from all unrighteousness and to set us free and just the truth the truth will set you free and his word it's in his word guys he is his word so yes i just wanted to illustrate that a little further for you guys and i'm sorry my kids have been a little loud and I, i'm trying to make more videos not being in the car and not driving and be in different places and stuff so I'm trying to find my place where I need to fit in and make videos and I'm trying to get enough time to do those but I love you guys and it's a little long but I had a lot on my heart and I just want to end this godly um, spouse series with where's your heart at what, what's your intentions of your heart how much have you surrendered in your heart to God's way because a godly spouse is for a purpose and it's not to make you whole or to um make you a better person intentionally for yourself or anything like that or to do it for the wrong reasons like your intentions have to be pure because god has the ultimate plan for marriage and it's it's not a plan for us to just get with somebody to have a love story or to do it for the wrong intentions or to do it the way the world has told us to do it because we don't want to die alone or we we're bored and we're lonely and we just want someone to call and text us or we just want to post pictures on social media or something like that no 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 god has designed marriage for so much more and if you haven't seen the godly spouse series that i've done please 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 go back and watch it this is i think number 
six or seven video and this will probably be my last one in case god puts it on my heart to speak more of it and it just goes if you go back to the videos it, i just talk about like god's design for marriage and what it brings what a godly marriage brings out into christian man and woman in a godly marriage and what god has created it for and not what the world has portrayed it to be and it's really deep you have to know your purpose you have to you have to know that you have you have to know that jesus is your everything with or without a spouse and you have to be okay with not having a spouse or having a spouse if he's called you to but you have to surrender your heart in all those areas so that's why i really wanted to do like a series on the godly spouses and um this one i wanted to finish with the heart because it's it, it's all in your heart are you willing to let god change your heart are you just nagging about your spouse being some type of way or something are you more focused on someone else like a relationship you're in or something are you just focused on god changing them and praying god changes them because it's not like that you you can only pray for god to change your heart god can work in that person's life and stuff like that and intervene because of your prayers but ultimately we have free will and it's our decision are we allowing god to have his way do we want his will for our lives or are we holding back like are, are we keeping those doors to our house our heart closed like ultimately that's it so what is the condition of your heart all right i hope this helped you guys and just remember marriage is for a purpose and not what the world has portrayed marriage to be marriage is a covenant between a man and a woman before god and it ultimately the triangle of pointing up to god it it's it's his design and he has created good works for a married couple to do and individuals so you're called to do those works so do those works all right until next time i love you guys have a blessed day bye